Fox 6 News, because you matter. The heroin pipeline is gushing into Wisconsin and addicts are filling up local morgues. Fox 6 investigator Brian Polson shows you what is driving this epic resurgence and why police say it's only going to get worse. Brian. And Brad and Ann, if it sounds like we're overstating the heroin problem, well, consider this. Mass shootings killed 11 people in Wisconsin last year. Heroin and other opiates killed 111 in Milwaukee County alone. But this is far from just a Milwaukee County problem. I am heroin. It was the poem that did it. I destroy homes, tear families apart, take your children, and that's just the start. Vicki Keekler talked for more than 20 minutes about her daughter Stacy, the happy baby, the blue eyed child, the high school heartbreaker, the doting mom, the heroin addict. It started out initially with the um, love you, mom. I'm real busy. Sorry I didn't get back to you. She talked for more than 20 minutes without shedding a tear. It was about 8.30, quarter to 9, and I got a knock at the door. But it was the poem that did it. Just try me once, and I might never let you go. But try me twice, and I'll own your soul. In March, Stacy Kovneski had just been released from a methadone clinic. She was finally clean. She had told her father, because he was, you know, just coming out of a coma, that he had to get better to see her, see how he'd be so proud of her. But on April 3rd, she used heroin again, overdosed, and died. I'll take to you have nothing more to give. When I'm finished with you, you'll be lucky to live. Vicki shared her story surrounded by friends, family, and people she just met who know the pain of losing a loved one to a heroin addiction. They all have something in common. We're in West Bend, Wisconsin. This doesn't happen, you know. They live in Washington County. We're out in the suburbs. A few years ago, even a few months ago, Germantown might have seemed a peculiar place for a rally to stop heroin. But it seems Washington County is fast becoming a hot spot for heroin dealers to unload their product. They're coming in going, they are easy pickings. They're like lambs laying in the woods because we can go get them because those kids are workers, their parents are workers and they have money. We're not all rich people, but we have money. A recent raid on this Milwaukee tavern illustrates the point. In December, police and federal agents found 7,000 doses of heroin stored in the basement of Larry's Fiesta. In a public hearing to renew the bar's license, police testified that the drugs belonged to one of the bar's employees. Leonard Givens um, routinely on a monthly basis drives down to the Chicago area and procures approximately 350 grams of heroin on a monthly basis. According to police, Givens was using an apartment above the tavern to cut, bag, and prepare the heroin for distribution by three Milwaukee dealers. One month after the bust at Larry's Fiesta, one of those dealers, known to buyers as Corn, arranged to meet a West Bend couple at a Taco Bell in Milwaukee. He sold them $30 worth of heroin, and they drove back to West Bend to get high. The next day, Jennifer Cahoot was dead. Now the man she got high with, Richard Runkowski, is charged with homicide. And so is Corn, the Milwaukee dealer whose real name is Cornelius Green. Heroin dealers don't care. They don't care. They're murderers. They don't care. Vicki wishes more dealers would be charged under Wisconsin's Len Bias Law, named for the University of Maryland basketball star who died in the 1980s of a cocaine overdose. The law allows prosecutors to hold dealers accountable for deaths caused by the drugs they supply. And right now, there is no shortage of supply in Wisconsin. In 2008, just five Wisconsin counties submitted at least 10 heroin cases to the state crime lab for analysis. By 2010, 11 counties hit that benchmark. Last year, there were 18, from Milwaukee to the far north woods. It's exploded. Actually. And Attorney General J.B. Um, Van Hollen says today's heroin addict is different from the one you might remember in the 1970s. And a heroin addict was the, you know, the long, greasy-haired junkie who had track marks and everything else. And it's not in the case anymore. Heroin has been changed. But he says it's why heroin use is so rampant that should be most alarming to parents. 
It all starts from prescriptions. Vicki says her daughter suffered a hand injury in the fall of 2008 while working with a horse. She came home from the hospital with prescriptions for three different painkillers. I was wondering why she would need that many prescriptions and that strong for an injured hand. Before long, Stacy was hooked on OxyContin. But what Vicki never realized, and what many parents don't know, is that like many other pain medications, OxyContin is a derivative of opium. In other words, it's heroin in a pill. That's all it is. It's a, it's a synthetic form of heroin. Department of Justice Field Operations Director David Spackowitz says rampant abuse of prescription drugs has fed into a new generation of heroin addicts. Over the past 10 years, cocaine deaths in Milwaukee County have dropped, while deaths caused by OxyContin, heroin, and other opiates have skyrocketed. But Spackowitz says painkiller abuse finally seems to be leveling off, thanks to heavy enforcement public awareness, pill drop-offs, and a reformulation of OxyContin that makes it nearly impossible to snort or inject. So unfortunately, what we've seen is that because of that uh, uh, change in or the reformulated product, people are going to heroin because now they can use it the way they want to. All of those factors have driven up the price of black market pills. A 20 milligram pill of OxyContin, which used to sell for $10, now goes for 20. If I'm doing two of those, a 20 in the morning and a 20 at night, I went from a $20 a day addiction to a $40 a day addiction. Heroin's so much cheaper. I believe my daughter told me you can get a fix for like $5. <laughs> but it's a perilous transition. You're playing Russian roulette. And that's why these moms are speaking out. Start talking about it. Stop sweeping it under the carpet. For Vicki, the wound is fresh. I'll be your master. You'll be my slave. I'll even go with you when you go to your grave. Her daughter died a little more than a month ago, but she didn't want to wait another day to warn others before it's too late. Now that you have met me, what will you do? Will you try me or not? It's all up to you. I will bring you more misery than words can tell. You take my hand, I'll drag you to hell. When Vicki's daughter got hooked on pills, she contacted the doctors and pharmacies Stacy was using in hopes of cutting off the addiction. Vicki had no idea painkillers were a gateway to heroin. She says the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration's website has been a real eye-opener, and she wants other parents to check it out. We have a link on our website, fox6now.com. I have to say, that was news to me, too. I, that poem you read, or the mother read, was so powerful. Where did it come from? She found it on the Internet, and interestingly mm -hmm. enough, she actually showed that to Stacy. She read the poem to her while they were visiting Stacy's dad at the hospital. Stacy told her that poem was spot on, and she asked her mom to give her a copy, unfortunately. That was the last time Vicki ever saw her daughter alive. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tragic. Thanks for the Thank uh, information. Hopefully Got we it. woke some people up tonight, yeah. Brian. Yeah, that's, that's the whole hope here. Thanks. Well, the story the uh, nation is talking about tonight, I'll tell you, those three kidnapped women discovered after a decade, what did they endure? What went on in their minds tonight?